What's up, Mena Nerds? This video is all about the Cloak Shape Fighter, a pre Clone Wars era starfighter. It was manufactured by Kuat Systems Engineering, who also produced the Delta 7 Jedi Fighter and Fire Spray Patrol Craft, which would be modified to become the Slave One. At a cost of only 60,000 credits, it was tied with the TIE Fighter, but less than half the price of the ARC 170 and a third of the price of the Delta 7. Being 15 meters or 49 feet long, it was a Wookiee longer than the X-Wing, and less than half the length of the Millennium Falcon. At 13 meters or 43 feet wide, it was about 3 huts across, or 3 Jawas thinner than a Y-Wing. And at a height of 2.6 meters or 8.5 feet, it was an Ewok taller than the A-Wing. Its top atmospheric speed of 950 kilometers per hour, or 590 miles per hour, made it faster than the TIE Bomber, but slightly slower than the X-Wing, and markably slower than the TIE Fighter. Having a 72 DPF maneuverability rating placed it above the Y-Wing and equal to the X-Wing, but again worse than a TIE Fighter. Although stock versions did not have a hyperdrive, most opted for the hyperdrive sled, which was an attachable device that was similar to hyperdrive rings. This was rated as a Class 3, making it slower than most ships out there, including starfighters and destroyers, but it was tied with the Gazanti class cruiser. It also didn't come stock with any shields, but again, nearly all buyers opted for them, and it was rated at 96 SPD. This was nearly twice as powerful as the X-Wing, and a quarter stronger than the Y-Wing. Its hull was also relatively strong, with a rating of 28 RBD, more than three times that of the TIE Fighter, and a bit stronger than the X-Wing. The cloak-shaped fighter also had an incredible armament of two laser cannons, two concussion missiles, with 16 missiles on board, while many would upgrade to proton torpedoes. All of this only took a single pilot to operate, though many came with an internally located astromech as well. I think it is important to stop here and point out just what a ridiculously good deal this was. At the price of a TIE Fighter, you get something that has way more firepower, stronger shields and hull, and a hyperdrive. To really blow you away, consider that because they were released a few decades before the Clone Wars, by the year 10 ABY, you could pick up one of these for just 15,000 credits. Mechanics love the cloak shape because its main systems were easily accessed for repairs or mods, making it so that by the time of the Battle of Yavin, it was thought nearly impossible to find original cloak shapes. These often included even stronger shields, thicker hull armor, and more powerful weapons, taking this already incredible ship to a new level. Popular additions even included a cockpit conversion that made it double as a detachable escape pod. And to prove how modifications of this ship were so ubiquitous, this maneuvering fin was not stock, instead being one of the earliest popular additions to this ship, which is now considered the cloak shape's iconic look. Most people have only ever seen it with the fin, and assumed that this was standard. The first group to implement these was the Jedi Order of the Galactic Republic, who used modified versions of cloak shapes to fight crime and keep the peace, but they were also used by many planetary governments, and even criminal organizations like the Nebula Front. Anakin even flew one when he was 18 years old and still a Padawan, when he used a cloak shape that was owned by Fondor Senator to eliminate a counterfeiting operation run by Grudo the Hutt. In the following years, as more and more people were involved in combat with these, they realized that because it was a bit slower than other starfighters, it was slightly easier to target with heavy weaponry, so although it was very tough, no fighter can take multiple missile hits and still fly home. But this didn't keep them from being used, and were still highly prized by tuners, while many planetary forces retained them, as they greatly overpowered most raggedy pirate vessels. It isn't until their use in New Republic fleets during their hunt for Warlords Inn that their age finally starts to show, as many of them were destroyed in this battle. That's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. This ship was actually brought back in canon, no visuals or stats yet, but it matches the legend's profile, as it was being used by pirates in Hut space, and because this was set during the time of the Galactic Civil War, it does make sense that this ship would be loved by pirates, as it was cheap and packed a big punch. The cloak shape appears in a ton of Legends material, from the Dark Empire Sourcebook, Starships of the Galaxy, The Essential Guide to Vehicles and Vessels, and books like Cloak of Deception and The Last Jedi. So that's it for the Cloak Shape Fighter. If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copies of the reference materials used to make this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, don't overpay for that Sinar or Incom badge. 
Get the affordable quality of the cloak shape. And the force will be with you. Always.